Good morning, good morning, everyone. Thank you, thank you all for joining uh, our session uh, today. Uh, the web, the the name of the webinar today is uh, Mediterranean Adventures in in Practice. Okay. Um, I hope uh, I hope uh, all our interventions today will be uh, useful and interesting uh, for you. I guess there is uh, no no point that uh, explain what the Medusa project is because uh, uh, you know after three years uh, all of you are well aware of the of the project and uh, yeah, I see lots of uh, uh, familiar uh, names so you have been uh, coming to our activities uh, in the last uh, months and years so welcome back again uh, to a new to a new session. Um, please remember uh, today when you have uh, questions uh, to write them down in the chat, okay? Because um, uh, by the end of uh, our today's uh, session, um, we will uh, leave uh, some time for uh, answering them all, okay? We are going to collect uh, all the questions during the whole session. You can post them when you when you have your questions so you don't remember okay you write it in the chat i will collecting them and uh, we will read them all uh, by the end okay uh, you can uh, specify uh, to who uh, it's uh, address your question uh, if it's uh, to someone uh, in particular and uh, also you can introduce yourself in the chat if uh, we, we won't be able to share your uh, contacts so in case you also want to share your uh, your data, uh, you feel free to do it. Okay, uh, nothing else from uh, my side. Uh, I'm going to give the floor to uh, uh, Lina Alcalet. Okay, she's a member of the Jordan Inbound Tour at, uh, Operators Association, a member of the Medusa Project. So Lina, the floor is uh, yours. Thank you, Albert, and good morning, everyone. Thank you again for joining us today. So as Albert mentioned, after a few years of working on different things on the Medusa project, uh, you are probably aware that we developed um, research uh, material and inventory at the beginning, and then we moved into training. Um, after that, we launched uh, our subgranting competition and are happy to see many subgrantees in all the five destinations now implementing uh, their projects, which we will be sharing uh, with you, um, hopefully in the coming few months, uh, the results of which are uh, very interesting and are very useful for everyone working in the sector, I hope. Um, so today we would like to uh, share with you um, our final uh, part of the project, which is the marketing activities. So um, in tourism, marketing is uh, key. Uh, it's the core of all the activities. And uh, that's why we um, would like to share with you what we have been preparing, the activities, the tools uh, that we have uh, um, developed so far, so that uh, you as our stakeholders, as um, members of the tourism community can make uh, use of in your future activities and in your future, uh, the work in your businesses. So I would like to um, introduce our marketing consultant, Ms. Barbara Fritz, who's uh, the managing director for I Agag tourism for sustainability, uh, for uh, Agag tourism for sustainability, and Barbara has been with us for quite a long time now. Uh, she's a member of the team, and um, uh, with a wealth of information that um, we will be sharing a lot of her uh, work, uh, the results of her work today. So thank you, Barbara. 
So thank you very much, Lina, and a very warm welcome from my side. I have the pleasure today to lead you through this very interesting seminar on <clears throat> the market, let's say the Mediterranean adventures in practice. I'm a sustainable tourism uh, development expert and my expertise is in product development and destination development but also with a focus on marketing and branding. And I've been supporting with my team, the Medusa project in the development of the international benchmarking study. And we also, or I also developed together with the Medusa technical team and all partners, the marketing strategy for the Mediterranean adventures that you will get to know today. And I also developed the handbook and you will hear more about this handbook today in the webinar. But now before we start, I would like to give you a brief overview on the content of our webinar today. We have actually prepared for you four very interesting thematic sessions. The first session um, is um, about learning more what makes adventure tourism really sustainable? What is the adventure tourist looking for? And um, we also have a close look on the USP, the highlights and um, the key assets for sustainable adventure tourism of the five Medusa destinations. In session two, we will present you um, some creative and inspiring marketing practices from around the globe. And uh, in session number three, Lina will give you an insight on the newly developed umbrella brand for sustainable tourism, the Mediterranean Adventures. And if it, the session four is, probably the main interesting session for you um, because this is the session where we will uh, present the newly developed marketing tools of the Mediterranean adventures. And we will also have an, um, a quick introduction in the marketing, marketing channels, especially in the events that will be uh, offered currently. And you will also get an insight how you can become partner of the Mediterranean adventures. And as already mentioned by Albert, please collect all your questions because we have reserved after session four a spot for your questions and answers. At the very end, we will uh, summarize for you the next upcoming steps in the Medusa project. So before we start into our very interesting seminar, um, I, let's get some inspiration from the Medusa video, Albert. There will always be lands we have never seen, places we wish to explore, things we have never tried, and moments we have never lived. What if we can have it all in one small part of the world? Welcome to the Mediterranean, where adventure has no limits to a haven for thrill-seekers filled with adrenaline rushes. Discover breathtaking views. Take a leap from the ordinary and enjoy the excitement filling your body. Who said bravery is a given? It's all about resilience. So let the adventure begin in countries full of wonders. You are not alone. Trust one another and dare to seek new environments. You fall? Get up anyway and try again and again. We are living proof of perseverance. Nothing more challenging than immersing yourself into newfound experiences. Nothing better than taking a deep breath of fresh air. 
while gazing at the stars of different skies. And nothing more real than feeling, feeling the rhythm of waves and falling in love with nature. Embrace new cultures that never cease to surprise. Travel responsibly by respecting locals, travelers, cultural heritage, and most importantly, the environment. Benvenuti in Puglia! Ya, hello, ya, marhaba fikum bulurton. Ahlo, sahla fikum bulubnan. Benvenuta Catalonia. Marhaba fikum fikuna. Welcome to the Mediterranean. Step out of your comfort zone and jump into the most stunning panoramas that you will ever lay your eyes on. Travel from one place to another, each incredibly unique and thrilling. Hold on tight, or just let loose. Experience activities you cannot try at home, and destinations hard to find anywhere else in the world. Keep your eyes open for wowing sceneries. Gaze into the horizon and sense the beauty of life. Dive right into unforgettable experiences and discover the unknown. Ready for unforgettable adventures? Visit the Mediterranean. So, um, welcome to our first session now. Welcome to the Mediterranean. Our first session is on sustainable adventure tourism in the Medusa destinations. So, let's have a look what makes sustain what makes adventure tourism really sustainable. I mean, not every type of adventure tourism is sustainable and really brings benefits and economic growth to local communities without harming the environment. We have two types of adventure tourism. We have so-called soft types of adventure tourism, such as hiking, biking, trekking, um, usually or usually um, using slow mobility options and um, using um, local infrastructure, so-called soft tourism or sustainable tourism infrastructure, such as existing trails, signposting, or existing local tourism infrastructure. And this type of tourism, the soft type of tourism, has also the great benefit that in, it involves many local tourism stakeholders in the tourism value chain. For example, like local PMPs, local guides, small uh, restaurants, and also incoming tour operators, and thus creating income for the local communities. In contrast, there are also hard types of adventure tourism that usually brings um, less or no income for the rest of the uh, local communities or tourism stakeholders and mainly generates um, benefits for just a very small group, uh, mainly the, the company offering the practice and usually always creating negative impact for the environment. So this is just... Um, a small inspiration because before we start to have um, a deeper look on the Medusa destinations. As Lina explained, um, there was a long process of identifying the potential of um, the, the potential for sustainable adventure tourism development in the Medusa destinations. And um, there is a set of so-called um, sustainable tourism activities uh, has been identified uh, that we would like to present you now. It starts with mountain biking. Also canoeing is one of the activities. Camping, skiing, but mainly cross-country skiing, water and wind sports, 
like canoeing, for example, is a good example for sustainable adventure tourism. Hiking, I mean, hiking is the um, sustainable uh, adventure tourism activity. Also reaching big target groups, running, paragliding, rock climbing, cycling, bird watching. This is um, for a more limited target group and also snorkeling and a very nice um, activity to explore and experience the countryside is also horseback riding and caving. So those are uh, the sustainable adventure tourism activities that has been identified to be promoted um, under the Mediterranean adventures brand uh, within the Medusa destinations and the pilot destinations of the Medusa destinations. So now let's have a quick look to recall what does the soft adventure tourist actually look for? I mean, what are the trending motivations for um, experiences, um, adventures in foreign destinations? I mean, it's mainly gain new experiences to go off the beaten track. Also, travel like a local, feel at home in the foreign, last chance travel. There is always, also always a wellness component of enjoyment and wellness. And a very essential component that's gaining more and more uh, importance are so-called cultural encounters which mean uh, in terms of feeling um, and living the authenticity of the destination. So what is the target group? Uh, if there is a, a target group, or let's say, what is the so-called emotional profile of the target group of the sustainable traveler that will be visiting the Medusa destinations? What is he actually looking for? As we already heard, one of the main motivations for traveling is for uh, the seeking of new experiences to enrich the knowledge, a strong interest in culture, and also a strong interest uh, to learn more about or be part of living traditions of local communities. And the target group that has been identified, um, the target group of the sustainable traveler are mainly um, groups of young individuals um, that go for hiking, biking, also like trek, it's uh, trekking clubs from around the world. I mean, it's the pure adventure tourists, um, but also young domestic travelers are um, more and more seeking uh, or want to, want to get to know the destinations and to experience the destinations. And um, there is also the sportive, interested in local traditions, culture, nature, and sustainability-oriented um, uh, sustainable tourists looking for authenticity in the destination. I mean, we have a, a group of um, international young travelers, hikers, and adventurers. And um, there is all, also um, the Mediterranean lovers that always go to the Mediterranean, which could be an interesting target group um, to get to know this different side of the destination and um, to get to know more remote places and experience the, these places with slow motion activities like hiking or biking. And um, this is, for example, the well-educated and financially well-positioned traveler between uh, 35 and 55. Uh, it's, it's mainly the European traveler. So um, this is more or less uh, the profile of the target group uh, of the sustainable adventure traveler looking for new destinations or to experience new destinations. And um, 
within the Medusa projects, also uh, the key target market has been um, identified. Just to recall, what are the key target markets? We have the five domestic markets of the Medusa destinations, then uh, very solid target marking for um, sustainable adventure tourism is Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. And also other destinations in Europe are France, Norway, or the United Kingdom. And also Australia and the US are um, very well established target markets. But um, what is it now? What um, the sustainable adventure tourists can find in the Medusa destinations? And what makes this Mediterranean re region so special? What is authentic? What is unique? For these five Medusa destinations, Tunisia, Puglia, Catalonia, Lebanon, and Jordan. I mean, what can you find there? What you could not find in any other sustainable adventure tourism destination. I mean, what is the real unique selling proposition of this five Medusa destination? It's all, it's not one thing, it's a combination out of cultural diversity, a natural branding of spectacular, spectacular landscapes, different climate zones, authentic traditions, unique so-called cultural landscapes, living traditions and authentic practices. You find incredible historical sites in these five destinations. And all this connected, the five destinations are connected through history, shared values, and also the so-called Mediterranean art of living. I think this is mainly from my, the binding element and a key USP of this rich destination. And of course, the warm hospitality of the people in the destination. This all in all makes the five Medusa destination a treasure chest among tourism destinations. So um, now I have a, let's have a quick look. Um, on the sustainable adventure tourism highlights of each destination. Starting with Jordan. Jordan has six pilot destinations and it's all year round destination. With um, so top adventure, the first one is hiking and trekking. The second one is cycling and mountain biking. Then um, there is um, rock climbing and uh, canoeing, canoeing, sorry. There is all, also bird watching. This is the last one. Jordan has much more to offer. It also has um, great sustainable tourism highlights like diverse landscape. It can provide a great infrastructure on long distance trails and biking trails. Um, it also has a rich network of um, protected areas and it can um, it has unique and rich cultural heritage um, with many religious and uh, with many religious sites and of course with Petra, the well-known Petra and unique authentic living culture of Bedouin tribes and a variety of local crafts, as well as outstanding culinary experiences. I mean, in a nutshell, Jordan stands for inspiring desert landscapes, for world heritage sites, as I said, a well-managed network of uh, protected areas, 
Um, and this also the cultural diversity and the different landscapes makes Jordan a unique, sustainable adventure tourism destination. Now, Tunisia. Tunisia is not really known as a sustainable adventure tourism, but it has a lot to offer. We have um, three pilot destinations in Tunisia, uh, including Gabesh, Medinin, belonging to the authentic um, adventure tourism destination, the heart. It's also an all year round destination. And the top adventures in Tunisia are uh, hiking in the Dahar Mountains. It's cycling and mountain biking, wood watching, running, paragliding, and parasailing. Also, Tunisia has um, highlights to offer, uh, like this diverse uh, nature and landscape. I mean, Tunisia offers um, a coastline of 1,300 kilometers um, with forests, mountains, and deserts. It also has a rich cultural heritage um, with strong different influences. But maybe most people don't know is that Tunisia also has 17 national parks. It's not really um, well known for protected areas. Um, and most of protected areas are wetland sites, which is also quite curious because everybody imagines um, Tunisia of a completely dry destination. So Tunisia also has a, a well-established um, network or infrastructure of hotels, guest houses, and unique stays like, um, for example, the Traclarites in the very south of Tunisia. But in a nutshell, I mean, what does Tunisia stand for? It's a destination with outstanding cultural heritage, with arts and craft and incredible extremes of landscapes. It has forested coastline, coastlines, the Harian Sand Seas, the Atlas Mountains, and it also has um, the co a coastline of 1,300 kilometers. This all in all makes um, Tunisia an um, upcoming sustainable adventure tourism destination with great potential. Now, let's come to Catalonia. Catalonia has um, also four very interesting pilot destination. Also, Catalonia is an all year round destination offering several top adventures like hiking in the Pyrenees, for example, cycling and mountain biking, bird watching, and also water and wind sports like um, canoeing in is also very common and um, very sustainable adventure activities. The highlights of Catalonia is a diverse landscape. Catalonia has outstanding diverse landscape. It has a coastline and uh, it also has uh, high mountains up to 3000 uh, meters. It already has a well-established um, Stopped adventure tourism infrastructure with more than 5,000 kilometers of signposted long distance hiking trails, which is fabulous. One national park and 14 na natural parks, and it also has 580 kilometers of cool coastline. Two geoparks and two bio, uh, biosphere reserves. And it has 9,000 kilometers of signposted hiking trails. Cool. This is a real sustainable adventure tourism destination ready to receive tourists and ready to be on the market with more than 2,400 rural tourism accommodations. In a nutshell, what makes Catalonia so special 
It has it's a real diverse region with high alpine with the high alpine Pyrenees, extensive green, 580 kilometers of coastline, sandy beaches as well as wild and a rocky coast, and um, offering this variety and having all this um, sustainable infrastructure already in place. Perfect to receive tourist, sustainable adventure tourists from now on. Now we get um, to a very exciting destination, and um, I would I would say it's still a hidden pearl for sustainable adventure tourism. It's Lebanon. Um, Lebanon also has um, a set of uh, un quite unknown pilot destination. It's an all, all year round destination, offering uh, top adventures like hiking and trekking. Uh, camping is also one of the top adventures in Lebanon. And what is also curious um, that you have alpine skiing in Lebanon because also here we have the uh, climate extremes and have all this uh, incredible different landscapes. It's rock climbing and biking. And as I said, you know, the diverse landscaping makes um, Lebanon really unique. It's going from coastline to high mountains. Also, Lebanon has uh, a network of authentic hiking trails based on um, old food pass networks, traditional food pass networks. And Lebanon has um, the Lebanon mountain trail crossing Lebanon on 400, uh, almost 500,000 kilometers from north to the south. And um, what is also not known is that Lebanon has 15 nature reserves an UNESCO bioreserve and uh, about 350 accommodation facilities, um, including monasteries um, in place to receive sustainable adventure tourism. So in a nutshell, what makes um, Lebanon a perfect uh, location to receive sustainable adventure tourism? Tourists, it's the mix of Mediterranean coast, rugged mountain peaks, ancient setup forests, and also this very diverse cultural and culinary experience um, that makes Lebanon actually an insider's tip for sustainable adventure tourism. Our next destination uh, is in the very, very south of Italy. It's um, Puglia. Puglia also uh, have, Puglia has five pilot destinations. And um, they can be visited, all five of them, all year round. The top activities then can be conducted are all year round, hiking and walking, cycling. It's also horseback riding, caving, scuba diving and snorkeling, and bird watching. Puglia's highlights are an extensive networks of hiking passes, including very ancient roads connecting uh, different sites in Puglia, caving options from north to the south. Puglia has one of the clearest seas in the Mediterranean. They are famous for this crystal clear water like you would find uh, usually in the Caribbean. And what you also find in Puglia are uh, strong local culture with this very authentic architecture, like the trulies, the dry stone hats, 
Puglia is uh, quite advanced in sustainable tourism development. Um, it's part of the Natura 2000 network. They have two national parks and 18 uh, regional parks and three protected marine areas and 16 state reserves. Additionally, nine official walking and six cycling routes, and more than one hundred, uh, more than thousand accommodation units. So, um, a very um, strong sustainable tourism infrastructure to offer. What makes, in a nutshell, I mean, what makes Puglia so special? What makes it different from other regions? It's a region of extraordinary colors, beautiful diversity of nature, culture, history, breathtaking landscapes, living traditions. But what is also special um, of the destination, Puglia, is that um, you have 800 kilometers of coastline. And it's where actually the Ionian Sea and the Adriatic meets. So this was uh, the great destination Puglia, the last of our five Medusa destinations. So, Po, wow, this is really an amazing potential for the development of sustainable tourism. Uh, in the Mediterranean, what we saw here. And the task is now how to market all this authentic cultural and natural highlights um, and sustainable adventure tourism practices and how to jointly market this. And this will be done. And that's the Medusa market approach. Um, to the Mediterranean adventures that has been jointly uh, created as an umbrella brand standing for authentic, sustainable adventure tourism. But before we start with our next session now, um, we will get insights from the Medusa partners um, from the meeting in Beirut. So let's join to the video from the Medusa meeting in Beirut. Medusa project focuses on uh, sustainable adventure tourism. We started the project identifying and valorizing some territorial assets. So we uh, provided some uh, destination reviews in five of the participating countries. Lebanon, uh, Tunisia, Jordan, Italy and Spain. I know that we share a lot of things in common, but now I feel empathy for our culture, our tradition, our history. So the work now we are doing, I think it's important because we are connecting uh, people. And this is the key for the challenges that we have in tourism and in this uh, period where vulnerability, uncertainty, complex are the normal. We receive uh, tourists uh, mostly in summer. In Medusa Project, we are trying to change uh, this. We want uh, to bring a tourist uh, during the whole uh, year. Uh, our model of uh, tourism uh, based on uh, adventure tourism will uh, allow us to bring uh, the benefits to less known uh, areas. This makes sense all together because we share uh, challenges and it's good to share uh, solutions. So there's a lot of cooperation going on, there's a lot of uh, ideas rolling around, there's a lot of thinking of how do we promote sustainability beyond the project, which is a very important outcome that I hope we will be able to uh, maintain as partners.
the project of Medosa provide us the opportunity to work outside of the nature reserve and to share our experience with all relevant uh, stakeholders in Jordan to develop our policies for adventure tourism and uh, standards guidelines and to create new packages for adventure tourism together with all uh, partners in Medosa project. For us, uh, Medusa project uh, consists of creating uh, and uh, capacity building uh, for uh, tourism adventure providers. Uh, we had five of them that was sub-granted to create new paths for climbing, uh, biking and hiking. Of course, coming here like to the ground and seeing your work has so much meaning. Like when you come here, meet the people, see the things that you are doing. It's not, you know, just being sitting in an office. And, and so it's going really, really well, I would say, yes. So welcome to our second session, Adventure uh, Tourism Marketing Practices. As already said, we will present you now a selection of uh, creative and inspiring marketing practices. So, I mean, now you're aware of the potential, of all this potential in your destination, and the question is now how to get to the target market, how to reach the target, your target group. Now it's not, you already know me, but now I have my colleague Yeva joining me. Hello everyone, my name is Yeva Zamaraita. Um, I'm working in Agec Tourism for Sustainability as junior consultant. And I was also working on a Medusa projects such as a benchmarking study and handbook for marketing. So, now, we will present you eight sustainable tourism practices. Um, the selected practices um, we have chosen all have a special marketing approach. The first one, for example, is using clients' review as a promotional tool. The second one is um, an, an example for storytelling for creative marketing campaigns. We have joint branding and direct market access via targeted corporation. We have also marketing through personal stories of local hosts, a very nice one. Use social media smartly for direct market access. Marketing tools on specialized travel media. And we also have a good example on an umbrella organization for successful joint marketing. Uh, on marketing sustainable destinations, slow motion, focus on slow motion. And um, our last example is on establishing local partners network and joint branding and receiving uh, or gaining strong marketing positioning. So let's start with practice number one. It's called Wilderness Scotland. And um, Wilderness Scotland is actually a tour operator in Scotland that um, offers a wide range of adventure holidays and wilderness experiences, like hiking or mountain biking and trekking, and um, mostly in remote regions of the highlands and islands of Scotland. They are twice um, winner of the Best Green Tour Operators Award in uh, in the World Travel Awards. And what they're doing very special is they're using um, client refuse extremely successfully as a promotion tool. And um, they have more than 5,000 refuse with an extremely high satisfaction rate. Um, as you can see here. So how do they do that? What's their marketing approach? I mean, every client receives feedback survey when they return from their uh, guided or self-guided or tailor-made holidays with Wilderness Scotland. This is um, their first practice. 
And then um, they integrate the review in the marketing um, and promotion channels, for example, uh, prominently showing them or displaying them on the website. So when you enter the website, you immediately find this um, very uh, satisfying client's reviews. And um, plus they have a whole web page with reviews. This is a um, very smart marketing approach and it's also easy to implement without invest without major investment so good one practice number two so practice number two comes from uh, albania that's also a tour operator a responsible tour operator called active albania they also offer a wide range of adventure activities from hiking cycling to rafting and canyoning in albania but also its neighboring countries um, that's also a sustainable tour operator. They mostly work with small local businesses. Often it's like family businesses, even like you know, one or two people um, in a family working on that. And this also gives this local character to their tours because people can really experience a genuine hospitality. And it's a great practice for using storytelling for creative marketing campaigns. For example, their most successful uh, campaign taken by Albania has nearly half a million views on their YouTube uh, uh, video. So let's see at their marketing approach. So basically we deliver creative market campaigns with a very clear message. Uh, taken by Albania campaign um, has a direct reference, very smart direct reference to uh, the Hollywood movie Taken where actually Albania was uh, portrayed with the negative stereotypes. And they, they took this uh, movie and they made a campaign out of it, combating those negative stereotypes with all the positive aspects of Albania, such as spectacular landscapes, the outdoor activities, also putting a very big focus on local people, culture, and food. Um, their most recent campaign is also using the storytelling and telling the story of Albania as authentic, wild, and rugged country, also putting it up in opposition to other more explored destinations in Europe. And so local voices play the key role, as I said, also in, the, in their campaigns, where you can see different types of local people inviting tourists to come and visit Albania and be taken by Albania. But also we have it uh, web, on the website, we have a testimonials page uh, where you can actually see the faces of local people or those small family run businesses and we tell a, a little story about them and their business. So the next one is the authentic mouth Yes, thank you. This was very, also a very interesting marketing approach. So now we come uh, to a great example for joint branding and directing marketing act marketing access, actually via a targeted corporation um, in the uh, authentic Amalfi Coast initiative. An umbrella brand, which you see here, has been created to highlight the less known hinterland. Um, of the popular Amalfi Coast, because tourists are all visiting the Amalfi Coast itself, but nobody goes to the hinterland actually. And this um, umbrella brand has been created um, to highlight the less known hinterland and also uh, with the objective to promote the local and authentic um, producer and service providers offering local culinary experiences, arts, crafts, um, but also offering rich nature and cultural experiences. And this initiative, it, it, it was it recently started, it's a quite new initiative that has only like two years on the market and it already unites 24 local nonprofit local stakeholders, it's nonprofit stakeholders, but also like um, uh, small uh, pizza, uh, pizza makers or small or local craft people and 
the uh, initiative um, works through a testimonial approach, presenting this local, putting this um, local testimonials, like local heroes in the spotlight. So, um, but what's really special um, on this marketing initiative is that um, they have created from the beginning or they have looked for a strong partnership. So what they have done is they partnered with um, the biggest um, sustainable German, sustainable tour operator association on the German speaking market. It's called um, Forum Anders Reisen. And um, this association unites 137 small and medium sized tour operators um, looking, always looking for, uh, looking for, looking and for sustainable adventure tourism experiences and selling them, for selling them very successfully to the German and uh, to the German Swiss and Austrian travel market. So, what's the marketing approach of this very interesting initiative? I mean, they do have a clearly defined target group. It's a higher end sustainable travelers that you can find as um, existing clients of the from Amnes Ryzen Association because they have a huge network, they have a huge group of frequent travelers. And um, it's this sophisticated group of travelers paying, that is willing to pay more to have um, a hiking or trekking experience with cultural encounters. So this is what the success factor is, the targeted partnership with the German speaking travel market. And this results in press trip and fan trips um, starting in 2021. And it has been, and has shown the first success after a very short period. So we think it's also a very good marketing example. So now we go to, the next one. So now we go to the north of Europe, to Lithuania, an example of Lithuania Travel, which is an official tourism development agency of Lithuania. And uh, we check their marketing campaign uh, and have you been here, uh, which was launched by them to highlight lesser visited regions and boost uh, domestic tourism in Lithuania. And this com big campaign consists of a series of smaller creative campaigns that all um, show these lesser known Lithuanian destinations and regions, putting in focus and telling the story of the interesting people who live in those regions and the destinations, and also the unique experiences that these so called local heroes are creating. Because so we always look for very enthusiastic uh, locals to, and very, um, yeah, very enthusiastic locals. And uh, we can already see the tourism growth increase in lesser known destinations after these campaigns by more than 100%. So their marketing approach is really showing the local hosts and telling their authentic personal stories. So in the center, you always have like selected local hosts, very enthusiastic um, locals that, that are handpicked with uh, interesting stories. So, for example, in 2021, they, uh, they had a campaign of Have You Been to Our Place, uh, which showed these locals in different destinations, and they pr produced a series of very professional videos where those locals were telling the personal stories. So, in the center of the video, it's not like the landscape and the destination, but actually the local, and they are telling you why this place is so unique and so special. Uh, for them, but that kind of connects also to you when you watch it. What is their connection to, to the place? Even also there are some personal life moments that they experienced uh, in this place, in this destination, for example, like their love story or something like that. Now we come to the next practice. It's um, Iceland travel. And um, here we have a great example on smart on the smart use of social media to directly reach your target audience. Iceland Travel is um, actually a very well-established tour operator in Iceland 
offering nature, culture, and adventure tours. And um, this company reaches around 300,000 people through its social media channel, of which are only 200,015 are on Instagram. And this is really a high number for a small destination and a DMC in a small destination. So let's see how they do it. I mean, what Iceland Travel do is they invest in the visibility, they highly invest in the visibility on social media. What they do is um, they do daily posts on social media channels, especially on Instagram, sharing stunning uh, Iceland landscapes, but also live impressions from the tours. And they share this other side from Iceland on social media. And um, additionally, um, oops, additionally, um, they also create live two videos like short videos um, where a local guide shows different places around the country. This is what they all do them. They do that themselves and they daily invest um, a certain time for um, their work on social media and having great impact and great results in terms of audience reach. So now we go to Slovenia uh, to the practice number six. It's uh, this is a good place. It's a Slovenian tour operator for uh, also adventure holidays, mainly cycling, hiking, and wildlife watching tours. Uh, although we are biggest focus is on cycling tours that last uh, from three uh, days to two weeks. And it's a very sustainable tour operator. We have certifications from both Travel Live and uh, also Slovenia Green. And uh, it's a practice for um, using the specialized travel media for marketing the tours. And they, since their main um, product is cycling and mountain biking holidays, we have a coverage in those main specialized cycling and mountain biking adventure magazines. So their marketing uh, approach is really like having also this clear target group, cyclists and mountain bikers. Uh, and then uh, focusing on those media outlets that are tailoring uh, those kind of uh, travelers. And they also have uh, uh, travel markets, so Germany, France, uh, UK. And uh, they are featured in such specialized media as, for example, adventure cyclists, bicycling, mountain bike rider, Pine Mountain Biking Magazine, Mountain Biking UK, Active Traveler Magazine, or Big Bike. But they also are featured and we have articles on their tours and destinations in so bigger media outlets, more general ones, as Lonely Planet, National Geographic, also The Guardian for the UK market. So, yeah, and one more uh, is the Alpine Pearls. <clears throat> so it's a marketing partnership uh, corporation in 19, uh, currently 19 unique villages in the Alps, in the countries of Germany, Austria, Italy, Slovenia, and Switzerland. And uh, what's very special that they are all sustainable destinations that focus uh, primarily on soft mobility. So once you go to this destination, you don't have to worry about your car, you leave your car behind, because uh, we offer a, a wide range of soft mobility options on a destination from a public transport, like very efficient one, to the e-bikes, bikes, uh, hiking, taxis, and, and so on. And uh, that's umbrella organization for joint brand marketing. So really focusing on sustainable destinations. And currently we have 150 environmentally friendly adventures um, uh, under their umbrella uh, that are offered for both summer and winter seasons. So their marketing approach is again having a very well pre-selected villages, so really the ones that um, that comply with the set of quality and environmental criteria, and that can offer this soft mobility component very well, so that they can keep their promise. Uh, all those villages, we uh, we have to pay the entry fee and the yearly membership fee, 
And as mentioned, uh, then they all get featured on the main web portal, which is very popular, especially with the German speaking market. Mm -hmm. And they offer uh, numerous premium adventure activities and one can filter it uh, during, uh, depending on the season, so summer or winter, as well as holiday packages already prepared. So now let's um, get to the last uh, practice. The last practice is Rotary in Argentina. And um, it's a tourism, a sustainable tourism initiative in Portugal run by a nonprofit association. And it's actually um, a great example on establishing a local partners network and um, for joint branding and reaching a, a strong marketing positioning through joint branding. The Ruta, um, the Rota Vincentina has a strong network of um, 1,714 kilometers of hiking pathways um, and over a thousand kilometers of mountain biking trails um, connecting uh, spectacular landscapes, nature, culture, and wellness activities in the south of Portugal. And um, it's what they have is um, they're all connected to the Ruta of Vincenza uh, partner system, and it's like a it's a like a quality label for uh, local partners identifying and uh, marking local partners. Um, the Ruta of Vincenza has a direct booking system. They also have a certification as a leading quality trail in uh, in Europe. And it's a great example for um, establishing a local partners network to get direct marketing access and to jointly gain strong marketing positioning. I mean, all partners of the network, which the partners network consists out of accommodation business, says local service providers like car rental, bike rental, local guides, um, whoever is uh, part of this tourism value chain. And they all those 200 local businesses, they benefit from the 20, 24,000 hikers that come currently per year. So um, what is the marketing approach? As already said, what we have is the brand partner network that consists of small local businesses um promoting sustainability and quality standards in their businesses so sustainability and quality standards is the binding element um and to make it recognized and visible for the hacker they use a joint brand so um as i said the businesses included are um accommodation car rental taxes luggage transfer local commerce agencies to operate and they all commit to a certain set of criteria partners receive the project partners logo this is what you have what you can see here and which is highlighted and um i mean partners um also have a there is a preferred booking system for partners and as i said the um what creates direct market access is that they have a direct booking platform and um, you can book directly and the benefits are going uh, directly to all stakeholders of the Rota Vincenza brand. So that's actually um, a good example to, to finalize because um, it brings us to the topic of joint branding. But uh, before we jump to session number two, three, the joint, the branding session, I would um, like to inform you that you find all the, you know, that you find the good practices presented, um, the marketing practices in the newly designed and elaborated handbook. But you can also, uh, you also find further information on sustainable tourism platforms there and um, marketing and events and fairs, and also guidelines and inspiration on how to get your uh, business to the target market. 
And this handbook will be provided to all participants of the webinar together with uh, the presentations by next week. So um, before now we go um, to session number three. Um, and I would like to give the floor to Lina Alcalet, who would give us um, insights now on our newly created Mediterranean adventure spring. Lina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Barbara. Let me just um, share my screen one second. Sorry, I'm just trying to make it bigger for everyone so everyone can see it well. All right. Yes. So the Mediterranean Adventures brand, um, as Barbara mentioned, um, after all the work we've done um, and working as partners, uh, we knew that if we want to market all of this together, we had to create one brand. Uh, one uh, one image, one voice uh, that will work uh, for all of our destinations together. So we wanted to make sure that this brand is, of course, sustainable. It promotes the sustainable adventure products and experiences. It uh, reflects the authenticity of our destinations. It highlights its uh, natural assets, its cultural highlights. At the same time, this brand should be a unique um, kind of identity uh, for our destinations. So we all should feel uh, that we belong uh, to this brand, including the local stakeholders, the tourism businesses, the communities. So everyone would be part of this brand. And um, at the same time, sorry, my, yes, this brand should promote, as Barbara mentioned, soft adventure tourism activities, because this is where the sustainability lies, uh, soft mobility options, um, cultural experiences, um, and cultural heritage. So after all of this, the brand that we uh, created uh, is the Mediterranean Adventures. The design of the brand um, took the ideas of the Mediterranean colors, the Mediterranean uh, tiles, the emotions, um, everything that really is the Mediterranean. And the slogan for this uh, brand is experience Mediterranean adventure treasures, because as again, Barbara mentioned, we feel that this is a treasure chest of, of all the things that we have in the five uh, destinations of Jordan, uh, sorry, of uh, Medusa. And uh, one of the more, most important elements about the project is that we are trying to promote the less known destinations. So yes, there are a lot of destinations in Catalonia and Puglia and Jordan, Lebanon and Tunisia that many of you know of, but there are hidden treasures that um, really uh, very few people explore, including the locals, by the way, um, let alone the uh, international tourists. So this is where we would like to bring um, the highlight within the project. As mentioned before, in order to be able to market this together, we should look at what are the top activities within our project. So in this case, um, we have the hiking uh, and trekking, uh, cycling and mountain cycling, uh, bird watching, and uh, water and wind sports that were identified as our top um, uh, activities. And of course, addition to all the other activities that are available that are soft and sustainable within these destinations. So um, I, I noticed in the chat that uh, someone mentioned that Lebanon does have this. We Most of the destinations of the Medusa project have most of these activities, um, uh, but the top five are the ones that the brand will be focusing on in the promotion. And of course, the rest will be featured uh, as well. So as any other brand, um, we also need to have our flagship product and our flagship products uh, should draw attention of the visitors uh, to our destinations. Uh, flagship products help us um, attract the special target group that we are looking for, people who would be interested in our top activities and exploring the less known of our destinations. Uh, the flagship products would also help market the special characteristics and the authenticity of our destinations. And finally, 
it has to be an established product that will um, people will recognize uh, people will say yes i've heard about it yes i've uh, uh, read about it um, and i would like to explore what's uh, happening around it so these flagship products in our destinations have been identified as the long distance trails so all of the five destinations have uh, featured long distance trails that have been there for a while that have been well developed well established well promoted and these are the five flagship products that we want to promote Particularly, this is the Jordan, uh, the Lebanon Mountain Trail in Lebanon. Then there is the Penedes 360 in uh, Catalonia. There is the uh, Tamazre to Durere Trail in uh, Dahar destination in Tunisia. Then in Jordan, uh, we are uh, trying to combine uh, the Jordan uh, Trail along with the Wild Jordan um, uh, uh, Nature Reserves. So it's a combination where the Jordan Trail passes through the reserves. And in Puglia, we have the Vidi Pietra, which is a beautiful uh, trail, uh, cultural trail and um, uh, religious trail that uses horseback riding um, in a lot of it. So all of these, uh, want, we want them to be promoted under one vision, one brand and one marketing approach. For this, we decided that our vision is that the Medusa destinations and their flagship products are jointly positioned and recognized as one of the most diverse sustainable adventure tourism destinations on the international sustainable tourism market, standing for cultural and natural diversity, richness and authenticity, and are famous for their Mediterranean art of living. We really believe that it is the Mediterranean art of living that kind of is the melting pot for everything that we are promoting today. Thank you, Barbara. I will stop sharing and... Thank you very much, Nina. Floor. We will have a short coffee break now for everybody because after all this information, everybody has to relax and breathe a bit. So we will see you in 10 minutes.
So welcome back, everyone. <clears throat> So as I mentioned um, <clears throat> at the end of our uh, previous session, uh, we want to market the Mediterranean adventures as one vision, one brand, and one marketing approach. <clears throat> Sorry, to do that, we have to do it with our partners. So who are our partners? I'm sorry, my screen is not moving. Yes. So we want to work in partnership and promote it on, under one umbrella. Our partners in this case are the private businesses, uh, which are the tour operators and the service providers, and uh, obviously the marketing st stakeholders, which are the national DMOs, uh, local DMOs, uh, and NGOs. With the marketing stakeholders, the stakeholders there is um, a whole um, uh, concept that we are currently working in, uh, on, which is um, kind of an alliance that we want to work together on, and this will be um, worked on separately. And with the private businesses, uh, the tour operators and service providers, we have a special arrangement where we want them to be uh, our active partners in um, the Mediterranean adventures. So how can they become our active partners and use the active partner badge, which can be used online and offline? There is a certain a set of eligibility criteria that uh, these businesses have to adhere to in order to be able to use the Mediterranean Adventures active partner badge. And these criteria are seven. They have to be uh, registered in one of the territories of the Medusa destinations. They have to have a visible adventure tourism offering, whether on their website, on their social media, um, in their brochures, uh, obviously with a set adventure program in place. And um, the programs should have an integration of local communities. Their work should show that they are working with local communities as well, uh, applying sustainability, at least as businesses. And if they can also promote sustainability to their partners, that is a great um, further step. Of course, they would be promoting and focusing on soft adventure tourism activities mm -hmm. and promoting the authenticity of uh, the Mediterranean destination. So why do we suggest and we recommend that you partner with us? Um, because by working together, by being together under a joint uh, umbrella, we are stronger and uh, more visible on the international market. Uh, we are all can be more recognized as sustainable adventure tourism operators, service providers and stakeholders in the Mediterranean. Uh, this will boost our business reputation through the co-marketing and the branding. Um, having access to a broader and more specialized international target markets, um, because as Barbara mentioned before, our target markets are defined as a brand because they work for all of us as the five destinations. And so we are uh, targeting our campaigns towards those markets. Of course, being part of a network of sustainable adventure tourism businesses where you can find the uh, right partners for uh, your next um, either trip or next program that you can promote together, create joint uh, cross-border uh, products and services and um, work together in marketing these activities. And finally, there is a great tool that will be offered to you through um, direct promotion under the MediterraneanAdventures.org uh, web portal, which we will talk about a little bit later. And now I give the floor to my colleague, um, Leticia. Welcome to the first session. First of all, thank you very much, uh, Lina, for this insights um, on the Mediterranean Adventures brand. And now we get to the most interesting session, the session number four. And as I already mentioned, this session um, will present you the newly developed promotion tools. Uh, this is what we hear from Leticia now, but also the promotion channels. That's what we will hear from Lina. And at the end uh, of this session, we will hear, uh, we will have like the first live demonstration um, and we'll have a first outlook on the Mediterranean Adventures web portal. So Leticia, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, uh, Lina. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Litesia Baine Bouchatke. I'm the project manager of Medusa at the Rene Mawad Foundation in Lebanon, which is uh, playing the role of communication coordinator among uh, our partners, uh, Catalonia, Jordan, Puglia, Tunisia, and Lebanon. I will go through the marketing tools and channels of the Mediterranean adventure, which were developed. But first, I think that Albert put uh, the links of our social media channels for Medusa. I join you to I I ask you to join us in in discovering what we're doing uh, and uh, what is expected to be. So um, I will share my screen. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so, um, so the five Medusa destinations uh, feature strong potential to become competitive, authentic, and sustainable tourism destination. To this extent, the project included a variety of marketing activities and promotional tools, such as flyers, uh, one general flyer introducing all five destinations, and one flyer uh, for each destination, totaling uh, five, des five destinations flyers. A picture gallery and videos uh, representing each destination's sustainable adventure tourism activities, authenticities, and local people. Um, a hiking guide for each destination per country. Uh, and starting September 2022, uh, a social media campaign will be launched. Also, and most importantly, a web portal uh, with the marketing content and a member area per country. The logo of each destination, per color you will see them, appear in letters that were designed exclusively for this project uh, to portray the diversity of experiences a person can have through his journey in one of the five uh, destinations. The design is inspired from the Mediterranean tiles, as my colleague said, and all based and influenced from nature with the form of the leaves, uh, with colors in majority vibrant and warm uh, to show the energy of the uh, adventures. So the Mediterranean adventures stand for sustainability, uh, sustainable adventure tourism product and experiences reflecting the authenticity, natural and cultural highlights of the unique Medusa destinations of Catalonia, Puglia, Jordan, Lebanon, Tunisia. Therefore, uh, a general flyer uh, introducing the five destination was developed as well as one flyer per country featuring in each the seasons, the top activities and the highlights of each destinations but also the pilot areas and the map in which we worked. A set of uh, around 50 pictures from the pilot destination in each country were shot, reflecting the spirit of the Mediterranean treasures standing for authenticity, local communities, local uh, architecture, standing also for a soft adventure uh, tourism activities such as hiking, trekking, etc. Uh, moreover, we are in the process of developing two thematic video clips um, for each of the five destinations around the Mediterranean adventures with a storyboard um, presenting the destination itself in the first one and showing the testimonials of local people in the other one. Another tool is the hiking guide, one per destination, and this is, uh, this is a great uh, uh, tool uh, that will be developed around 50 pages with an overview map of the hiking routes and the pilot destinations, uh, presenting of around one main hiking route and five smaller ones per country, including text, 
pictures, an overview map of the presented routes. Also, a social media campaign will be launched starting September 2022, targeting international markets, uh, such as German speaking markets, but also uh, Norway and English speaking markets like UK, USA, Australia. It will also be a targeted social media campaign of the promotion of the web portal that we will develop uh, later on with our colleagues and the Mediterranean treasures. Uh, the new products and the less known destination in each country, focusing, of course, on destination people and activities. Last but not least, the development of the Mediterranean Adventure web portal that will help promotion of the Mediterranean Adventures brands and its pilot destinations, products, services, and activities. The portal shall allow listing of specialized tour operators that will be selected based on certain criteria and will be able to promote uh, their products and offering on, on the platform. So the web portal is uh, www.mediterraneanadventures.org and you will be, that will be uh, developed later on with uh, our, branding, uh, our development web company. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leticia, for um, the introduction to the marketing tools. Uh, I think it's interesting to mention that um, you will be allowed to use marketing tools once um, you're active partner of the Mediterranean Adventures. And now I would like to hand over the floor to Lina, who would give us who will give us an insight on um, some specialist marketing events within the Mediterranean adventures. Nina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Barbara, and thank you, Leticia. Um, so in order to combine the online and offline marketing activities, we have chosen um, three uh, offline activities that we will um, be using, uh, promoting, sorry, my screen is not moving, um, that we will be doing together with our partners and stakeholders. So the first of these is the Adventure Global Travel Summit, which is organized by the Adventure Travel Trade Association in Lugano, Switzerland, um, first week of October. Uh, so in this event, uh, we will be uh, participating along with uh, partners from the Medusa destinations. Um, uh, so uh, we have the team uh, of the Medusa uh, project, and we will be selecting two tour operators from each of the Medusa destinations uh, to join us. How will the selection process be uh, done? Uh, so there will be a tender process. Um, so please follow our social media platforms that Albert uh, uh, shared in the chat. And um, based on this selection process, uh, by the, which will be announced on the second week of August, um, the tour operators uh, will be selected. Um, the, the criteria will be um, kind of similar, uh, easy, sorry. Um, the, as mentioned in the active partner section, uh, the tour operators should have at least one adventure program. Um, they, ha they have to be um, sustainable, showing us some sustainability work. Uh, they have to be working with local communities. So similar uh, criteria to what we mentioned in the active partner um, a badge section will be applied to the selection process. And um, through this uh, participation, the Medusa project will be covering the cost of um, these tour operators' participation and accommodation expenses. So as soon as the process is out, the tender is out and the selection is completed, we will inform the winners um, to start preparations for uh, this very exciting activity. It's a beautiful event that happens uh, every year and gathers over 800 participants on a global scale. It's very targeted and um, there will be also um, a webinar for those who will participate with us on how to prepare for the um, Adventure Global Travel Summit, uh, which will be conducted by the ATTA. So we'll be looking forward to that. 
Our next activity is a series of familiarization trips, FAM trips to the Medusa destinations. So after all the hard work um, through the subgrantees, uh, through our stakeholders, we do want to showcase our destinations to uh, international tour operators from the target markets um, and uh, to media, uh, tra specialized adventure travel media. Uh, to increase the content and the storytelling um, of these less known destinations that we want to showcase. The target dates for the FAM trips are around October, November, and there will be um, more announced uh, early September about how uh, these uh, FAM trips will be working and who will be eligible for participation. Um, how do you do the registration? The target markets are the same market, uh, market that uh, we mentioned before of UK, US, Norway, France, France and uh, Germany. And um, we will specifically have three international farm trips uh, in Puglia, Catalonia, and Jordan from those regions, from those target markets. And in Lebanon and Tunisia, we will be having local farm trips that will target uh, local uh, tour operators and um, tourism stakeholders uh, to show the new uh, newly developed destinations. So as mentioned, in terms of the international fan trips, these are the target markets and the selection process will also happen through a tender, which will be issued by the project um, through our social media. And um, also it will be uh, done in cooperation with the ATTA and the results will be announced during the event which we will be participating in. And the last of the offline activities will be a study tour to Puglia. This is an educational uh, activity for uh, stakeholders from the Medusa destinations, uh, service providers, uh, mainly who have uh, been working on developing adventure products and um, marketing adventure products and services. Uh, this is planned towards the end of October. And uh, the call has been already out for this um, and the selection is almost over. We are in the final uh, stages of this. There's a whole set of eligibility criteria that was um, promoted as well. Um, so the purpose of the study tour will be uh, to learn the good practices. We talked a lot about the marketing good practices. Um, so we will talk more about those in Puglia. We will also be talking about the good practices in the product development area, which uh, the Puglia region has a lot of uh, beautiful things to showcase. It will be a great opportunity to explore um, co-creation opportunities, cross-border um, activities that uh, service providers or tour operators can work together on and um, learn more about uh, marketing techniques through um, a specialized workshop that will build further on what we are doing today. And of course, creating linkages with like-minded professionals, um, which will help uh, the, the services, uh, the businesses that join us to expand um, their outreach and um, expertise. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Lina, for this um, presentation on the event. So there's a lot going on and it's really worth to join. So, but now we have heard quite a lot about the Mediterranean Adventures web portal. And um, I would like now to hand over uh, to the team of White Oysters, who will actually give us um, like a live presentation on the current status of the Mediterranean web portal. And uh, Marco and his team will also give us an interesting insight on their creative marketing approach. So, right, Oysters team, the floor is all yours. Hi. I'm uh, Mark Bartfeld. I am uh, the editor in chief of uh, of uh, White Oyster Magazine and the creative director of uh, White Oyster Creative. Uh, before you start wondering why I'm wearing these goggles, I'll take them off because it's hard to see. <laughs> uh, I happened to be in in Jordan a while back in the fantastic desert of uh, Wadi Rum. Uh, the day before that, I had been diving in uh, the Red Sea, and I found these goggles on the bottom of the sea while I was while I was diving, and I couldn't leave them there. I'm Dutch, so uh, I took them, and uh, we were camping out in the Wadi Rum Desert, and in the middle of the night, an enormous sandstorm appeared, 
And, you know, it's extremely hard to see in a sandstorm. So I now understand why they're wearing all these uh, the, these the the the, uh, the habab, hadabs, uh, around their head so that you can actually protect yourself. But still, for your eyes, it's hard. But I had this thing on my head and uh, just around, uh, just under my pillow. So I put it on, and it saved me during this extreme sandstorm, uh, which was, of course, a fantastic story because I was there for uh, uh, for a story that I was writing for National Geographic and for Newsweek in the United States. And um, why am I telling you this story? Uh, because stories, storytelling is also uh, the base for what we are going to do with, uh, with, with Mediterranean adventures. Um, we have already have a, made a, a small start on uh, the, the web portal that we are building, a platform where uh, all the service providers and tourist operators can come together and showcase what they have to offer to the to the public. And when it's up to us, we're gonna create all the storytelling around that. Um, we have already made a start with that, as I said, and my partner Fritz will tell you more about that. There we go. You didn't hear anything of what I just said. <laughs> Welcome. Here is the website, uh, mediterraneanadventures.org. And um, at this moment, uh, we are under construction. Um, we have um, um, added uh, some test adventures already. And we are now, um, um, I'm going to tell you how we are going to um, use this website. Obviously, um, this uh, portal is to promote uh, your tours and your products. Uh, so uh, when we when we get to the page, uh, the first thing uh, that people who know what they want to do, they can uh, uh, already find the location. Uh, okay, I want to go to Catalonia or Jordan and um, or I want to go caving, hiking, uh, horse riding, they know what they want. But we're dealing with upcoming destinations. Um, uh, a lot of the regions in Tunisia are relatively, un if, if not very unknown to the general audience. And um, when we're talking about uh, Jordan, uh, a lot of people have heard of um, uh, of Wadi Rum and of uh, Petra, and they have either been there or not, but they don't know what else uh, there is in Jordan. So I think we believe that our primary task is to do the storytelling around your products, um, because uh, as uh, uh, service providers, operators, um, you have a certain tour that you want to promote, but we need to give um, uh, the uh, yeah the, the the background to it. Uh, where is it? Why is it? We need to inspire people to to get there. So this um, uh, this website is not only about uh, listing your adventures, but it's very much about telling the stories that uh, are going to sell your um, adventures. And if we're looking at um, uh, one of these, um, I hope my Okay, let me see. How do I get to the next one? I'm oh, sorry, I have a bar in the middle of something. Yes. Um, so we have the homepage where we have, uh, of course, we start with uh, the, uh, the search box and the activities. And then uh, there's an immediate shortcut to the destinations themselves. Uh, but uh, what we really want to show you right now at this moment is that we're actually going to the destinations. So welcome to Jordan. Um, it's important for us that uh, we have good photography, good videography, um, that we want we, we really want to inspire the people. So uh, let's have a look at, at, at the Jordan page. This one has been done. We have implemented Jordan right now and the other regions uh, are going to follow. So um, basically we give an introduction on uh, the country. We have a lot of photography, uh, people who want to go and see immediately the, the different regions, they can skip down to see the regions. 
Uh, we've already implemented the place where the trails can be downloaded that are being constructed. And of course, more pictures. Uh, the more pictures, the better, uh, in my opinion. I'm a photographer by trade. Um, and uh, so in Jordan, we have the different regions, all the different governorates, and there are all these different activities that you can do there. So we decided to uh, highlight the, the governorates. So for instance, here we are, the north. Everybody, like I said, everybody knows Petra. But uh, nobody knows that Jordan can actually be very green. And this is why storytelling is so important. So um, we, we went to the north, we wrote a story about it. Uh, and in the same time, uh, this is a, a listing where it, it tells what you can do and see in the north. Uh, there are, um, uh, there's the, the forest reserve of Yarmouk. You can do birding, but most importantly, you can meet all the people uh, in while hiking. Um, um, there's a huge, a huge history. So all of that we want to show. Um, very important for uh, the audience to to get attracted to it. Uh, while we uh, we show that, uh, there's also. Uh, uh, a way then when people are inspired, of course, uh, they can go to the activities and see um, so the, uh, what the activities are. Those are your listings. So um, uh, there are many different uh, uh, things that uh, our developer um, Damien is going to explain to you in a moment, but I'll stick to the storytelling because uh, yeah, storytelling is the way to uh, forward in, in, in all kinds of destination marketing. And to take an example, if you are a sustainable uh, uh, eco lodge and you're listed on the site, um, then it's very nice if there is a story about you um, writing more uh, about who you are, what you do, and it's, it's written by a third party about you uh, which is a very nice thing. So we created this one with the Feynon Eco Lodge, for instance. Um, and it could be a story that uh, that that we tell, um, and uh, people. Then in the end, there's a call to action, and if people click that, then they go straight to the tour that is offered by, or the the, the activity that's offered by the Feynon Eco Lodge. And it's all about uh, inspirational people and uh, uh, yeah, in an inspirational country. So we, yeah, uh, we need people to really feel like, hey, we want to come to Jordan. Hey, we want to go to that region to, uh, to see that uh, lodge. And um, I think that's uh, one of the most important messages that, that we have at this moment. Um, so when people, uh, we have a call to action um, at the Feynon uh, Lodge, so people that are inspired, they go to the uh, to the tour of the Feynon Eco Lodge, and uh, it's basically it's it's an experience. So um, you have all the pictures uh, in the in the top. Uh, you have a description of the tour, the FAQ. So if people, yeah, there's all kind of, people always have many questions. All of this uh, you can fill out, and Damien's going to tell you uh, more about the, the functionality of it all. Um, so yes, uh, storytelling, uh, content creation, um, uh, making sure that there is enough good photography and, and good videography, and that there are stories uh, available for, for you as uh, service providers and operators and uh, creating campaigns uh, surrounding the Mediterranean adventure brand um, and and the the, the whole uh, hub where everything comes together is Mediterranean adventures um, web portal and now I would like to give the word to Damien please thank you Fritz let's share my screen So um, I'm Damien, uh, responsible for the development of the web portal. Uh, from a technical perspective, we have created uh, a multi-vendor platform, just like Airbnb and Booking.com. So um, from a buyer's perspective or a traveler's perspective, for example, when you search, you're going to the overview page with all the search um, 
with all the activities. The activities are listed on the left side. Uh, of course, there are uh, all kinds of filters like categories, um, the seasons, um, uh, most reviewed, highest rated, but we're not um, ready yet um, about that. Um, you can preview uh, an activity. Of course, there's a that there's a there's a map on the right side, which is also clickable. Um, you can save an activity, uh, which will be uh, listed on your on your um, um, wish list. Um, um, for example, how do these activities uh, come up at the portal? That is, I have to go to something. Okay, here it is. On the right side, there's a dashboard. Um, so this is the dashboard for the uh, operators or service providers. Uh, so when they're registered, um, this is where they can add activities and manage their activities. So for example, here you can see a list of the activities that we have added as example. Um, here on the right side, they can edit them front end. So they can edit them front end and they can remove them. Before they're published, they're pending. So this means that they have to be approved by the admin. Um, I can show you a little bit how it works. So there, these ones are published and they can edit them front end here. So for example, you can add the website where the activity is listed on their own website, um, add a, a telephone number, WhatsApp number, um, all kinds of additional information, like if there's uh, liability insurance, and of course, activity details, um, frequently asked questions, and um, of course, photos and videos. Um, these are all listed. So when it's approved, wait a minute. Where do I come here? Yeah, I will just go like this. I am using the live site, so this is all working already. Um, let's see. For example, this one. Um, so they can manage it all. Um, and here on the right side, you can see all the contact information. Um, buyers can review. You can also, um, uh, in your dashboard, you can react on the reviews and you can manage them. So that's a nice feature. Um, for the rest, there's marketing metrics built in. So uh, the operator or service provider knows how many user views they've had, how many customer leads they've had. Um, and we can build in other uh, oh, the reviews, of course, and then we can build in other metrics if it's needed. Um, when they end, they add an activity on the right side here, and they can change the upper the profile here. For the rest, yes, that's what I wanted to say. So I think my colleague Martina is going to tell you a little bit more about the registration progress. Um, the partner program, how do you register? Um, and I would say, um, yeah, thanks. And before Martina comes on, uh, thank you, Damien. Yes. Um, so uh, what I want to uh, explain further is that uh, built in into the system is that uh, you uh, can list your tours and uh, the, the customer uh, can uh, follow the listing and then uh, make uh, make an inquiry that comes straight into your uh, inbox. And from there on, uh, as the tour operator, as the service provider, uh, you can deal with it. So um, um, it really is, uh, uh, there is no booking engine behind it, but uh, it will be definitely uh, handed off right away to you. So it's, uh, it comes straight into your inbox uh, with inquiries from the uh, the customer. That's what I had to say. Okay, well, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Martina, and on behalf of the 
Right Oyster team, I will tell you a little bit more about why it's a good idea to share uh, the plat to join the platform and uh, also how you can uh, register at your activities and a little bit also about the timeline so that you know when it is uh, that you can actually start using the uh, platform and start uh, taking a benefit from it. I will share my screen right now. Oh, um, I have a notification that some other participant is sharing. Uh, Damien, you can uh, Damien, you stop, sharing. stop sharing. Okay, perfect. So let me see. Perfect. So, um, a lot has been said about uh, the Mediterranean adventures and about all the benefits that it will bring to you. So uh, without uh, repeating uh, all what my colleagues said, I wanted to summarize in three powers that I kind of uh, created for myself. So the first one is the power of the inspirational storytelling. I hope that it was quite clear from what Barbara, Lena, and especially Fritz and Marco uh, tried to show to you. And I really hope that with the philosophy of the storytelling, we will be able to bring to life the stories of people who make uh, this amazing uh, uh, region of the Mediterranean. So for us, we would really like to uh, build uh, the platform on the power of uh, the images of people, their incredible stories, the beautiful landscapes, and to really use it all together so that we can be a little bit different than the traditional yeah. website. Hello? Oh, sorry, there was just disturbing. Uh, so that we can be something a little bit different than the traditional uh, websites that you can find a lot uh, online these days and try to fight the digital fatigue uh, that many of us are suffering from. So I hope that we will be able to do that. Uh, the second point uh, that I would like to say is the power of the community of the like-minded professionals. I see many participants joining uh, us today, and I hope that really with this web portal, we will be able to create a community of people who are passionate about showcasing the beauty of their regions and help them with the tools uh, that uh, the web portal and all other um, uh, tools that uh, the team of the uh, Medusa uh, have been developing in the past uh, three years. So I hope that um, we will be able to really show you that uh, joining the platform can be beneficial to your business and the work that you are very passionate about. And the third one is uh, the knowledge of information and uh, and uh, uh, the power of knowledge and information through the project a lot has been developed be it different reports be it uh, different uh, information in a, in a guidelines benchmark studies uh, Lutesia mentioned the the gallery uh, of the photos the video so we really hope that this website will serve as your go-to place when you are looking for additional content that could uh, boost your uh, business I will now show you a little bit more about the uh, registration um, and uh, adding yourself as a business and your activities to the platform. Uh, Damien already did that a little bit, but let me give you a little bit more details. So I will now move to the uh, website. And uh, here, uh, when you will be able to log in while the page is uh, functional, uh, let me see. Uh, you'll be able to manage your profile. So the first point will be about adding your uh your uh, profile uh, information as a business. So it will be a simple uh, registration of the address. It will be uh, your contact details. It will be description of your business. As we said, we would like you to offer the preferably soft adventure uh, tourism uh, um, activity. Uh, but in the beginning, uh, the, the selection process will be done manually. So we will really uh, try our best to assess every interested service provider uh, individually. What is really important for us is that you have a valid uh, registration in a country of your, uh, uh, of your origin. So this is something that can hopefully also help us assess uh, your uh, uh, business in terms of the quality assurance. So uh, you would be asked to submit your uh, details and then also the registration. This would be the first step. The second step is something that uh, Damien showed as adding the activity. And here uh, we will have more information about you. And then what I would like to highlight are some of the uh, quality assurance uh, uh, information in terms of the 
for example, contract uh, management, uh, complaint procedures, customers uh, feedback. We would like to see if you uh, have uh, uh, systems in place for the cancellation uh, policy uh, and others. Uh, besides that, what is important is, of course, the sustainability and uh, social action focus, focus. So we would also ask you uh, about these. Um, when the website is live, uh, there will be a tutorial <laughs> that will explain everything, but uh, the IT team is really working hard to make the uh, website users friendly and very easy so that uh, it's really welcoming uh, because we would like to create the community of people without uh, making you go through tons of stuff uh, before you can join that. And, um, and now let me uh, show also... I just for the record, Martina, you are sharing the PowerPoint and not your uh, uh, browser. Yeah. Okay. I, no, okay. I just wanted to uh, speak uh, about some of the content that could be uh, used uh, at the website. Uh, once you are able to access it as a, as a register, uh, registered user. So I mentioned the reports developed uh, throughout the project, the benchmark uh, studies, the destination rep reports, you will be able to make use of the photo gallery, the, the branded uh, material, the, the guides. And over the time, we hope to be adding more. So this is something that will be available uh, for you and uh, something that you are able to boost your uh, business. And then finally, I will speak a little bit more about the uh, timeline. So uh, in a sense, this is really the first introduction to the portal. So you are not the chosen one, but people with whom we would like to make the first mailing contact uh, in the course of August. So we hope that uh, we'll be able to reach you and invite you to participate at the uh, platform. The official registration uh, will be hopefully open uh, in September, and uh, then um, you will be also able uh, to contact us already from now with any questions that you may have about how to join the platform and uh, how we can all uh, work on this together. So um, this is, I think, enough uh, for me, and I will be happy to take your questions if you have any. Okay. Thank you very much, Martina, and thank you to um, the White Oysters team for the very interesting presentation on the web portal. Um, it's, it's, I would just like to mention before we get to the Q&A sessions that all this material, um, all the presentations, including the handbook, will be sent out to all participants at the end um, of, of next week. So we, you will get the chance to have everything in written in case you missed something. So um, now I think, um, Albert, we will have the Q&A session. Right, Albert? Thank you, Barbara. Yes, uh, now it's time for uh, the questions you have uh, posed in well, in the questions and answer uh, section. So yeah, I'm going to read them uh, all. Well, first uh, was a, co a, a comment, uh, not a question for you, Barbara. It's a very interesting presentation. Uh, uh, all, all panelists, I, I recommend you, or I encourage you to uh, turn on your camera, okay? Um, because I'm going to pose you this uh, question. Okay, uh, second thing I see is, uh, Again, not a question, just a, a comment uh, from uh, Gida Brash. I guess uh, this is how it's uh, pronounced. Uh, she wanted to remark that in Lebanon, uh, also they have uh, paragliding, caving, stargazing, uh, uh, while, uh, while watching, uh, horseback riding, yeah, and others. Okay, but uh, uh, thank you for, for uh, sharing this. Um, Filippo Tito uh, from uh, Puglia region. Um, I believe he is one of the beneficiaries of our sub grant uh, program. He's asking, can we use the Mediterranean Adventures brand in our website? Um, so yeah, I guess uh, we are we can do it already, right? Uh, no, what do you think, you know? not yet, Albert. Not yet. No. Not yet, and it will be for active partners. So those that are approved as active partners on the platform are the ones who will be able to use it uh, on their websites. Okay, and okay, thank you, Lena. Uh, I think it's also important, you know, to to uh, just to mention that all uh, participants will be informed once this partner system of Mediterranean Adventures is really taking off. So 
this information will come once you can start applying for that and can participate. This will come through the Medusa project. So don't okay. be afraid to miss something. Okay, let's uh, wait then. Thank you, Barbara and uh, Lina. Uh, well, there was a, just a, a small comment when for the funny moment that uh, Marco put uh, his Googles, but actually Dominic Lee wanted to uh, state that it was not Googles, it was a mask. <laughs> okay. Actually, in the desert, they're called goggles, and in okay. the underwater, they're masks. There you go. There you go, Dominic. If you want to reply to this, uh, you are still uh, you still have time. <laughs> okay. And he also um, wanted to ask, uh, what is the anticipation of the traffic uh, to this uh, portal? So, question for the White Oyster team. Marco. Um, well, at this point, uh, uh, we can't really tell you uh, what uh, the, the reach of that is going to be. The, we have good expectations of the social media campaign that's going to start. Uh, we are also going, we also have planned that we will, through our own magazine, White Oyster, we will also push it. And we have 160,000 digital subscribers to our magazine. So that might also start with some traction. And regarding other marketing plans, uh, uh, this will be uh, decided in the future. All right, thank you. Thank you, Marco. Um, well, actually, what comes next, uh, I don't uh, really understand the question. It's uh, from uh, Ana Maria Nearico. Uh, registration page is on the screen. We continue this, the same slide. I guess there was a problem before, but it doesn't apply anymore. If not, uh, please, uh, Ana Maria, let me know what you, what you meant. Um, Caro de Gris. Uh, hi, are we supposed to see the website at this stage? Uh, uh, no, so maybe I can just say that uh, at this point, the site is under construction and we are finalizing the population of the site with all the content. So we really wanted to give you a taster uh, so that you have a feel uh, to what you can expect and what you can benefit. But at this point, uh, it was really just for the demonstration purposes for those who are participating in today's webinar. Thank you, thank you, Martina. Okay, next question actually is for me. Uh, Chadi Constantin uh, says, please advise, uh, advise me if you provide certificate of participation to this webinar. And uh, the, the answer is uh, not, we have not prepared any certificate to, for the participation of this uh, webinar, sorry. Um, new question from Dominic. Uh, sustainable tourism activities in Jordan, snorkeling, but no mention to scuba diving. Why? Perhaps Lina, you want to answer this? Yes, uh, it's basically they uh, they go together uh, in a sense, but um, because we uh, put the top activities uh, together, so that's why snorkeling was uh, the most uh, out there because most the people do snorkeling and it's a smaller group that does diving. But if when you go to the Jordan uh, uh, flyer and the brochure diving of course is there okay thank you thank you lina uh new comment from dominic uh, insisting uh, he says uh, it's a mask uh, mate mm, well let's let's not answer this <laughs> because i don't want the, 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 the conversation is getting hot i don't want to uh, get to the hands <laughs> mask or, uh, or googles uh okay um problem solved very well uh Okay, question from uh, Ruba Hanun. Will people be able to book activities through the portal? Mm, who wants yes, to add? Uh, that means that you get connected uh, with directly with uh, the service provider uh, as the customer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Fritz. And I want to add, Albert, that the platform, uh, at least at this stage, I don't know if, if ever in the future, it will not have a direct online payment uh, uh, solution. So customers will uh, be able to connect through the platform to your own uh, provided information, whether it's de uh, email or your own uh, uh, booking platform, if such exists. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lina. 
Okay. Uh, what, may, I, may I follow up on this? It might be interesting to hear from uh, the people that are now in our uh, um, uh, workshop to figure out um, if people would want uh, this to be a functionality in the future uh, to do the, the transactions. Maybe we can get some feedback on that from people. Okay. Uh, you you hear the Fritz? You can write in in this section uh, what is uh, your opinion. Okay. Okay. Um, so new question from uh, Chadi Constantin. Um, digit, digitalize the business insurance sector makes make the travel agency more profitable. Question I guess for Barbara Lina or whoever feels uh, they can answer this. Well, I can say that uh, nowadays, uh, being on the digital platforms is definitely um, a bigger advantage. And it's uh, um, it's an age where everything is digitized. You have to be available to your customer in all sorts of uh, ways. Um, not everyone can afford their own platform, obviously. So joining available platforms uh, like the Mediterranean Adventures in the future or other available pl platforms that serve the purpose of your um, business is definitely a go. And I'm sure Barbara can add uh, more on that probably yes i also would like to add you know that it's the most um effective and in terms of cost efficient uh way to market your business and your offerings digital is the future marketing marco you would like to add something yeah because uh this platform uh, as we see it is going to be uh, very much based also on storytelling and storytelling is has been proved to uh, be a successful way to get into the head of people since we were living in caves and uh, so usually when people read a good story and they kind of want to put themselves in that position uh you know this is this is a way that that you would be able to sell your trips Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Um, new question from Dominique Lee. What's the budget on social media campaigns? I don't know to which extent can we answer uh, this. Uh, Lina, what do you think? Uh, I would just say this is work in progress and uh, we will uh, let you know whenever anything comes up. All right. All right, uh, let's go with Caro de Gris again. Will the number of active partners per destination be limited? Who feels like... Can you repeat the question, Albert? Yeah. Will the number of active uh, partners per destination be limited? No. The, okay. the only thing is that at the in, in August, uh, when there will be the trial phase of uh, launching the web portal, we will be selecting uh, five uh, um, businesses per destination to try the website, to upload your information, your activities, to make sure that it works well. So you will help us basically ensure that this is um, that everything on the platforms well uh, works well for you from a business perspective. And once the website uh, is launched, uh, no, of course, everyone who fits the criteria is more than welcome to join the platform and the Mediterranean Adventures brand. And, and by being part of our uh, launch partners, uh, that means that you'll be the first uh, the companies to receive the publicity. So that's one of the perks of uh, being an early adapter. And uh, so I would all like to invite you uh, to definitely register uh, and uh, put some tours on it. And let's uh, let's make this work. Okay, thank you, Lina and Fitz. Um, let's move with uh, Angela Prudentino. She says, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the for your very interesting presentation. Inter she's interested in Puglia's adventures in order to be part of the platform. Is it compulsory to have the registration in Puglia region or I can be registered in the country I live in right now, which is Belgium. I come from Puglia, but uh, living around and uh, developing a project for sustainable tourism in Puglia. Thank you. So I will only add that as far as we're starting with the promoting Puglia itself and the activities are in Puglia, there is no problem where you are registered. We just need to make sure that um, you upload the, the necessary information as it is asked in the platform. 
Okay, thank you, Lina. Uh, Filippo Tito again. Uh, he says, uh, I read that uh, at the end of August, it will be a selection of five companies from the five destinations to allow them to upload the products on the website. So are not uh, the all winners of the grants automatically allowed to use the website? It, because it is not limited to the subgrantees, it is open for um, a, a wide audience. Uh, so there is not an automatic um, acceptance. Uh, anyone who wants, whether a subgrantee or not, will just need to go through the process. And um, uh, there will be a tutor tutorial on the website uh, to guide you through how you do the registration. Um, and at the beginning, as we mentioned, the process will be manual. So we will be manually approving it because the website is still not running, um, as you will see. But once all that information is available, we will be sending a uh, detailed email to everyone with all the um, all the steps that need to be done. Yeah, and if I if I may add to that, yeah. uh, uh, once we launch, uh, we want to have uh, a good a mix of the different activities so please do all uh, register because we're going to pick the ones that fit the best within all the activities okay thank you Lena and Marco let's uh, let's read Ruba Hanun again um, she says uh, we offer activities that are not a pure adventure they could uh, be classified as soft adventure, like uh, beekeeping and uh, stone mas masonry activities. Uh, do this uh, go into the website? Well, I think the question is clear. Um, yes, everything that is experiential and, uh, and is uh, related to local communities and local activities that showcases, you know, the local culture in the less known destinations is uh, absolutely welcome. And it is part of your um, on the route activity, on the trail activity. Uh, so definitely, yes. And perhaps it's a good moment to remind that uh, we are um, taking as reference the broad uh, definition uh, of adventure tourism um, that uh, is the one made by the the ATA, okay, uh, the uh, Association of uh, Travel Trade, uh, Adventure Travel Trade Association, <clears throat> which uh, is considered adventure tourism if it has uh, at least two of these three elements. It's in um, it has physical activity. It's uh, developed in uh, nature, natural environment, and. Uh, can have also cultural immersion. Okay, only two of these uh, three elements is uh, enough for considering adventure uh, trip. Okay, and I will okay. I will tell you definitely for a lot of people, beekeeping is definitely adventure. I mean, <laughs> bees are scary. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, uh, Angela Prudentino just says uh, thank you for answering her uh, question before. And now we have a uh, last uh, question. You can still post uh, questions, okay? We we put in the agenda. This is finalizing uh, in... Um, uh, we have uh, 12 minutes more, so you still have time, okay? Uh, but for the moment, we have this uh, long question or long comment. Let's see what, what is it. From Dominic Lee again. Uh, he says, uh, do you think the operators will commit uh, their resources to update your portal with information or maintain the booking procedures and communication between the portal and their systems? I, I guess it's perhaps, uh, perhaps better to answer question by question, right? Uh, uh, what do you think? Well, I don't know who to uh, address this, uh, actually. Um, so if any of you wants to answer already. If not, I, I can need... answer, uh, okay. Albert. So basically, the idea is not this is your website this is your portal it's not uh, really ours what we want uh, this is a resource that the project has created with the project funds so that the stakeholders in our destinations can benefit and promote their products and their services so um, it really depends on the service provider and the business how you present yourself what kind of information you provide the more information you provide the clearer it is the more um, the uh, opportunity is that you will get that business in return. So um, I, I hope that answers the question. 
Yeah, I'm seeing. And uh, if 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 I may if I may add yeah. to that, uh, if you add something to the web to the if you add your products to the website, uh, it first is going to be vetted by us. So basically, if uh, from a storytelling point of view, if you upload your experiences and we think you can present it better, we will help you present it better from a storytelling point of view. And uh, yeah, I hope that answers the question as well, why it, I, we think it's, uh, it's, it's important that you uh, upload your, um, uh, your activities. Great. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read all uh, his questions uh, together. I think it's uh, better, okay, because they are all uh, connected. He continues asking, what about the operators that uh, do not have or have limited knowledge of uh, digital marketing? Do you intend to provide training for them? And then he, he asked, uh, why not focus on uh, developing specialists uh, within the countries, graduates creating jobs? For example, in travel agencies, uh, uh, to make sure the businesses are sustainable and uh, can hire a train uh, or uh, can hire or train their employees. Uh, what will happen with the portal after the project is, fi is finished? Uh, well, that, let's leave this uh, last question for the end and, and focus on previous ones. Um, Marco, Lina, again. Uh, okay, let me add, Albert. So basically, the project has a set uh, uh, plan, uh, and uh, part of that plan included training, but that training was uh, conducted before. It was more on sustainability, which is the core focus of the project. There are a lot of other programs that are offering digital uh, marketing training that uh, the travel agencies can join. Um, this is unfortunately not the focus of our uh, program. And um, in regards to what happens uh, to the portal uh, after the project is done, um, the White Oyster team who you are seeing here today are, um, are there uh, and they will be staying there for a while. Uh, so the project has um, um, worked, uh, is working with them so that the portal is maintained and um, as I mentioned briefly in my presentation um, we are working with a variety of partners so there are different stakeholders um, from um, uh, from the NGOs from the DMOs as well as the businesses that we are working with and we are looking into uh, schemes um, and uh, different scenarios that will help uh, preserve this website on their longer run. But the project is guaranteeing that this website will be up and running at least for three years, and the plan is looking at how it will be maintained even further. Yeah, then uh, the whole questions are uh, answered already. Um, okay, uh, Ruba says uh, fantastic, fantastic or uh, answered, um, great. And now we have a question from Rania. Sorry, I just say Han, Errania. <laughs> it's a bit uh, complicated what comes uh, uh, next. So Rania from uh, Batch, but um, I'm sorry, this is uh, hard for me to, to read. Uh, Bachale uh, Trade Association in Lebanon. Okay. Um, uh, is it necessary to provide a private uh, product for Medusa project that uh, we upload only to this portal app? Or we can share all our available products and we are sharing uh, on other platforms. Again, uh, you, Lina. Uh, you can share any product that fits the criteria of uh, the sustainable adventure um, uh, tourism uh, with uh, focus on soft tourism. Uh, soft adventure tourism. So wh whether you're promoting it elsewhere, it doesn't really matter as far as you are actually doing that pro uh, service or product. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Constantine again, you can make what up, what up group to know, to know the future activities and to participate. I guess she's asking uh, what can, uh, what? Maybe I'm she not... meant WhatsApp group, but no, it's all on the social media. And in the future, when the Mediterranean Adventure social media will be launched, uh, there will be more to follow up on. All right, I guess uh, this answers your questions. If not, Charlie, please uh, clarify. Okay. Uh, Dominique, uh, appreciate our answers. And Rania, too. Okay. Uh, we don't have any more uh, questions. Um, let's, a ah, new one, new one. A uh, new one from uh, Carol de Gris. Uh, she's asking, 
Will there be any management on the number of products uh, that offer similar experiences in a destination? Often the platforms offer uh, so many experiences that it becomes more difficult to browse. Uh, I suppose like it's an interesting comment uh, that uh, we can look into, um, but it's maybe very early in the project to, to say definitely yes or no. If I may I add, uh, I, I think that it's actually a good thing to have too many, especially since we are thinking about starting it now new. Uh, so I think that later on, uh, once the process of approval is not done manually, there could be some uh, mechanisms in place. But at this moment, we will actually be happy to welcoming you <laughs> because we want to really create this community of professionals. So at this point, uh, we are happy with many. <laughs> Thank you, Martina. I don't know, Fritz, if you want to add something else. No? No, it's been said. Uh, uh, it's a luxury problem. Uh, I think let's first get started. Uh, and then uh, if it turns out to be uh, a challenge in the future, we can uh, uh, react in uh, accordingly. Yeah, and, and, and uh, I would like to add to that, if you are truly doing something uh, with sustainable adventure that helps local communities and everything. I mean, uh, on, on, on a lot of platforms, uh, the vetting process is not very strict. Uh, basically, anyone can put anything on it, and we will definitely be looking at every offering if this fits uh, the, that what we want to, that we are standing for. Thank you. Um, okay, one question from anonymous participant okay it appears uh, to me with this uh, name uh hi everyone for the people who want to be uh, registered in the platform they need uh, any specific certification um i don't know lina if you want to explain this uh martina this registration process or you martina Sure, sure, sure. So as we as we mentioned earlier, we would like uh, to see that the business is registered. Uh, Lina mentioned that we would like the offer to be taking place in one of the countries. So it doesn't matter if you're registered uh, elsewhere, but we would really like to see that the, uh, that the registration or license is official and valid also. <laughs> uh, and then uh, besides that, uh, the other criteria that I showed you already a little bit on the website, be it uh, liability insurance, quality uh, assurance systems in place and other items, uh, the sustainability focus action, uh, social action focus, these are criteria that we would like to encourage uh, for the uh, for the service providers that feature at the platform, because as Marco said, this is what we would like to stand for, but these are not the strict criteria to eliminate someone from uh, featuring at the portal. So at this moment, we talk about the registration and the rest, we would really like to see it and we would like to encourage everyone to, to work on these. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Martina. Uh, now, yes, it seems uh, there are no more uh, questions. Um, I want to remind you that uh, this uh, meeting, well, this uh, webinar has been uh, recorded and uh, in the beginning of the session, yeah, there were some uh, questions that were already answered uh, in written, uh, saying that, uh, yes, this is good, well, this has been uh, recorded and uh, you can watch it again. Uh, it's going to be uploaded in our uh, YouTube uh, channel, okay? Medusa YouTube channel. I shared all the social media links in, in the chat. So you can uh, uh, write down, you can get all these uh, links and also the, the link of the Medusa website. And uh, nothing else uh, to say from my side, just uh, Alina sharing something. Yes, now I thank you very much, Albert. Now we get to the end. And uh, before I hand over to Lina to summarize the last steps for us, I would like to thank Albert for uh, his organizational support and uh, providing the technical setup and everything. I would also like to thank all the participants who um, to, came to stay with us and also stayed with us and our panelists and i'm looking forward to um have you as a partner on the mediterranean adventures and now lina the floor is yours thank you very much 
Thank you, Barbara, for all the hard work you've done uh, with this brand and with all the marketing um, planning uh, we have been doing under the project. And so just as a reminder, um, our next steps uh, are we are going to share everything with you. So whether it's the handbook um, that is developed for the marketing purposes, which was the base for today's webinar and all the presentations, um, these will be shared with you next week. Um, the platform announcement um, as uh, Damien and the team are working on it as soon as it is ready for you to start the trial phase will also be uh, sent out uh, to everyone. Um, for those who have registered in the webinar, uh, we have your um, uh, emails. Uh, hopefully they're all correct so you will be receiving uh, the announcements uh, not only on the social media but also on the emails um, uh, the same will go uh, for the fam trips if you have um, a partner that you uh, are eager to showcase uh, Jordan or Catalonia or um, Puglia too in, uh, or uh, Lebanon of course uh, or Tunisia then once the fam trips are announced um, please uh, share those details with them um, in terms of the social media, um, we do uh, hope that uh, September will be our launch date. Um, uh, everything is currently in the development phase. And um, as we mentioned before, we are doing this so that you as stakeholders, as businesses can profit from um, this project, from all the activities that are being done. This is your gateway and this is your window um, to explore the opportunities. It is at no cost to you. And uh, therefore, we encourage you to uh, join us. Uh, let us work together and make this a better uh, opportunity for everyone. So thank you again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Stay in touch. Thank you all. See you next time. Bye bye.